So, thank you for your understanding at first. And then I think let's zoom out a little bit to uh, city scale because at first I'm an urban planner. And the second, because about affordable housing, I think which is quite close related to the city context, such as the social economic development, such as the local policy and the culture, and some kind of people who live inside, which were very key factors to to affect the, the affordable housing. So, because I'm from China, so I will talk something about something happened in China. Uh, as we all know, China is now on a high speed growing process, uh, just uh, 30 years, in the recent 30 years, which quite challenged the urban planning. I think it's as same as the India things. We don't know what happened tomorrow. We don't know, we can't forecast, we, maybe because of the economic booming and also because of population booming, which which quite challenge urban planning, what, how to plan. So today I would, I would like to say how to plan a city in fast growing China to coping with the high speed economic development and at the same time to settle down those low income workers. So, I take a story here about Shenzhen because we are now working in Shenzhen and Shenzhen is also the first opening up city in China and the first, fastest growing city in China and it also one of the uh, city with the biggest group of low income workers, immigrant workers. So, let's see what they do during this uh, period. It's, it's do quite a lot of work, uh, successful work. So, I, I think most of you know about that, so we, we just uh, slide it quickly. As, uh, as we see the GPT growth uh, after the uh, 80s, China is always on the top of the graph, and it's uh, now it's the uh, darkest uh, country uh, all over the world. And on the 2010, we keep up with uh, Japan and you know, go beyond it. Now it's, uh, we, we see how productive it is now. It's quite uh, strong and it's sometimes scared us a little bit because it's too quickly, we can't afford that. And of course, so, uh, uh, we have some policy about the one, one child policy which slow down our population growth a little bit but we are also on the middle process of urbanization so the city grows up quickly so that's uh, now we have uh, one of the best where's the okay the biggest group of uh, urbanization uh, of, of the citizen and we can also see from this map that uh, Chinese people are now moving from the big green land to small red spot, which means that people flow into the very advanced or economic zone for their for the, for more salary for their better life. That's uh, that's that's happened every day. Keep on keep on moving from the center of China to overseas to to the sea along the seas. Now uh, Shenzhen is here. And some interesting data that uh, per minute there are more than 40,000 uh, pieces of clothing are produced. And it's interesting that uh, after the, uh, the prince wedding in the United Kingdom, it just took 31 hours to clone case, <laughs> case wedding dress and put it into production line. Totally, you know, the same. And there are also some uh, incredible things that by the end of uh, last year, there are 470 skyscra uh, skyscrapers were built, and we, we plan to build more, much more than, than yeah. So, these are 1.7 trillion uh, RMB would throw to the sky, you know, yeah, just for the high scrapers. So then, let's have further on Shenzhen. What happened in Shenzhen? I think uh, Professor Yuhim have already given you some uh, introduction. Uh, so I think I, I should start from the location. 
Shenzhen is on the southern side of China, and one of the key identity I think of Shenzhen is it's a border city adjacent to Hong Kong, which almost decide the fate of the of the city. Uh, that's because maybe you you you, you have known that uh, before 1979, China was quite well, quite closed. And refused any kind of overseas resource, which drive the, the the country a little poor. Yeah, very poor, not a little, very poor. So, so in 1970, the chairman then, which uh, Shenzhen people love it quite deeply, decided to open up this, the, this China and start from several cities, because Hong Kong is one of the biggest city. Uh, which is an uh, international trade center and also it's quite close to China. At that time, it's, at that time it, it's belong to the United Kingdom. So, so uh, we, de we decided to open up uh, Shenzhen at first. So Shenzhen is the first opening city to, the, to, to the Hong Kong and to the world. Then what happened? It's quite in time, you know. At that time, Hong Kong is just on the on the process to adjust their industry because the land price was quite high. Many factories can stand the, the rate and then start to move out. And at that time, on the other side of the river, there, are plenty of, there were plenty of lands available waiting for development. So the thousands of uh, factories moved from Hong Kong to mainland China to Hong Kong, but to Shenzhen and then attract millions of immigrant workers swarming to Shenzhen and then strongly support that this city is uh, growing. So let's see how sharp it's growing. Now it's uh, the top, top four uh, city in China with the, yeah, very high GDP. And we can also see the, the, the sharp growing of uh, population. I think I could uh, explain something about the different color. Uh, the, the blue color is the population with hukou. The hukou means the permanent living permit. And the other is uh, without hukou. How to get hukou? Uh, if you are high educated, if you have high technique, or if you have very good salary to buy a house, if you have very stable and long time work, then you can get hukou in Shenzhen. But if you are just a very common immigrant worker, move from the other side, of, uh, from the central side of China, so you, you have this kind of population, you can live there, but you can get hukou. Oh, of course, nowadays hukou is not as not that important, but we still calculate population this way. Uh, uh, especially for affordable housing, we, it's, it's quite related to the whole code. I will talk it later. So, let's see the urban sprawl. Uh, just an expression. In 1970s, it's just a three kilometers there. And then, four years later, seven years later, it's uh, become bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger, and almost full of, full of people. <laughs> Nowadays, it's uh, reached uh, 830 square kilometers. That's uh, half of the lands were used, almost half of the lands in, Sh in Shenzhen. It's a Shenzhen territory, and then half of, of lands were engaged by, by, the pe by people. And so, we go from the little fishing village to a metropolis. You can see it's a very lovely picture that at the start of the Shenzhen beginning, the McDonald's mm -hmm. appeared. It's the first McDonald's in China. It's, 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 it was uh, it's the first station in China. And you can see also people start to drink beer and uh, do some hair things. <laughs> that's a, that's a, the first period. And then nowadays you can see it's Hong Kong. And it's uh, Shenzhen River, just the border of the China. Uh, now the border between the China and the Hong Kong, that's uh, Shenzhen. It looks 
very dense. So, after the common background about the planning, how to cope with the high-speed development, I think there are two questions we have to solve. The first one is that because we are start almost from zero, so how to support the flying economy? And the second problem is because there are you know, worker booming here, so how to serve large amount of immigrants? There are two two very hard questions for uh, for Shenzhen people to, to deal with. And let's start from the problem one, so how to support it. Uh, at the beginning of the plan, we can see the, the first plan in Shenzhen. We start to plan to build three industrial zones nearby the port, just uh, because there are three ports to connect the uh, Shenzhen and Hong Kong. So we start to build some uh, industri standard industrial zone and attract uh, the factory from Hong Kong to Shenzhen. And at the same time, Government plan many and build, not plan, they build, plan and build many, not many big communities, big, big residents to attract people to come here. It's uh, like social housing, but it's not for low income people. It's uh, for the people with talent, the people who can come here to invest, uh, the, the, the pioneer. Like, like Chinese pioneer and foreign pioneer, settle down them for the, for the industrial uh, improvement. So that quite works. Uh, it has successfully uh, attracted many investors and manufacturing here, uh, settled down to the uh, Shenzhen and also you know, millions of immigrants moving to Shenzhen. So after that, because of the success of the three uh, industrial park, Shenzhen started to do a more big plan for the whole city instead of three point. In 1960, uh, no, 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 1986, we, we can see the whole plan, and we also call it the uh, most successful plan in China. I can I can explain. I will explain why. It's it's very. You know, work. It does work. We, we call it the the, the, the the most contribution is the line cluster structure. So so why it does work? Because uh, if, uh, uh, that's an example. What, what's that? First, uh, they plan the road, a very heavy traffic along the uh, Shenzhen and connect Hong Kong and. Uh, and the Pure River Delta, it, it's to, to Guangzhou, it's a, it's a big city in Pure River Delta, another big city in, in the Delta. So it's following the regional development at first, and second one is because it, it's just along the, it just connects three industrial zones, and it activates, I think, most of the lands in Shenzhen. Every lands have their, have their opportunity to develop. It, 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 it's quite uh, works a lot. And then, yeah, it just uh, serve more lands. And then we plan many cluster along the, along the road because uh, this kind of cluster is, is multifunctional cluster. It's very small unit, not small, but it's uh, like an independent unit. But they, they are close. Each, by each other, but also divided by the some uh, green, uh, green belt, which are exist in, like a river, mountain, or some uh, farming lands uh, to to divide it. So so let's see the 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 fact, the reality of the growth. The the, the Shenzhen economic zone all, all almost follow the planning. They do, you see. Uh, Cluster by cluster with the big traffic along them, and they fill it up, fill it up, then become look like that. You know, almost the same. So everything almost the same. So that's why, because we we we, we sometimes we talk about why why it does work. And another about the cluster is uh, it divided urban space to many independent space, independent parts which he can adjust itself quickly 
to coping with the different kind of situation, and at the same time, it 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 can it uh, can affect the the whole structure. You know, you can grow up, you know, unit by unit or or unit together, but the, the whole structure is still there. It can you you can uh, the cluster can affect the other one. So. Then we move to uh, 96, uh, another, another uh, they updating the, the master plan, we still uh, follow the line cluster structure and we add three line here because uh, this also follows the original development. So that's that. And uh, plan some cluster along the line. That's also because at that time, Shenzhen was a uh, was already, you know, strong enough to influence the 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 region of the, the, the neighbor city. So they start to move up. Some factories start to move up because Shenzhen's land use land price had already raised. So factories start to use uh, start to move out throughout the, the line. So Shenzhen follow this original development and plan something along the land. So we can see it's a. Uh, uh, it's a land use now. It's a, not not now. Maybe several years ago, we can see clearly the three line here, and with several clusters which are not to be filled up yet. But we can see something inside, so it's all almost follow the planning. And nowadays, a new this is the newest master planning. We add a new line here. Uh, it's because we plan to do a to, to, to construct a tunnel here from Shenzhen to Zhongshan, another city, to connect the Shenzhen to the west shore. And another another way is to the Xiamen, a city just nearby uh, Taiwan. And uh, it, it's along the highway, so that's uh, we we focus maybe on the future that might be very interesting and not important access to develop. That's why we add one more line here, and we and it become network cluster structure. That what happened here? Okay. Um, and and as we all know, a line is, uh, the network is also a very flexible you know, structure which can which open enough open to the whole 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 region, and also it can it's very stable because. Uh, you can connect everywhere and everything have the same opportunity to development to develop. That's a key to, to support the, 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 the further uh, development. So now let's uh, give some a little sum up that how to support the, 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 the flying economy. We think from the Shenzhen's experience it's just to, to build up a flexible urban form. With a very open structure, we see all the structure are quite open to the to the Blue River Delta and to connect uh, Shenzhen, uh, Hong Kong uh, closely. And we use cluster to to modify the different uh, kind of uh, change. And also, it's very smart that the keep green by structure that we we, we said before. Uh, the cluster is divided by the green lands, but the green lands is a part of structure. If the structure is uh, Stable enough, then the greenlands were there. So that's uh, that's that's the first part of the uh, how how we solve the problem to support the the economy development. And the second one is how to serve large amount of immigrants. Yes, we we already say uh, uh, talk about the the people with huko and without huko. And uh, among the people who without huko, there are. 70, uh, 76 percent of them don't have very good salary. It's not uh, it, the salary is not very low, but because in Shenzhen the the price the housing price was quite high. It's very high. It's extremely high. So people can't afford of afford of them. So we can divide the person by the income, some rich people, which we can't forget it because they can do everything as they want. <laughs> and then low middle income people with hukou, which uh, I talk about, it, there are some uh, 
people with high education background, with a, a te, like a technician, or some some people are uh, with a very good uh, quality. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. It's a quite small group, but they are there, like uh, me. I think so. <laughs> and another group is uh, uh, the, the people with that hook of the immigrant worker. It's a large, huge amount of them. So both of them who need need housing, affordable housing. So what did we do? So for the government, they have to balance which which population they could support at first because the government have not enough money to support all of them. It's a very huge group. So for them, obviously, these kind of people are more uh, valuable for the city's future. So they select to, to, to serve for this kind of person, uh, for, which we call formal affordable housing, just uh, produced by, by government, and it's just for the person with HUCO. So it's a... Uh, oh, it looks right. This is the amount we already built and we plan to build. This looks quite big number, but but if you count, it's not enough, not big enough, not enough for the you know the huge group. And how to how to build it? <laughs> yes, we should start from uh, Soviet uh, style because uh, uh, China's urban planning system started from Soviet from the Soviet style, which, uh, which is a very strictly top to bottom um, construction system. Everything is done by government. So at first, Shenzhen do the same way. They produce, they, 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 they construct, they design, planning, design, and construct uh, affordable housing by government. So that's a start. Uh, Shenzhen start to from the 1980s. Shenzhen start to build the the, the formal uh, affordable housing for talent for the uh, young pioneer for pioneers such, such like that. But then they find they don't have enough money to do that, uh, which uh, quite a, the, the demand was quite a lot, but they don't have enough money. So how to deal with it? So after almost 2000. Government start to to use some uh, uh, way to you know to to deal with it, such as uh, they oriented the the affordable housing, but they use they they build this to to developers to help them to build. Maybe developer build it and the government go to buy it buy it back. That's the way. And also they they, they design some. Uh, some award for for the developers, such as I think it's almost as same as uh, things happened in, in India. Yes, yeah, sometimes so they they give us they, they give the developers more building floor area to 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 attract to to, to encourage people to do that, encourage developers to do that. So that's a that's a case that we have already seen. We 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 saw it. The Longyear Zhu is a affordable housing. It's it's done by. Van Ke is a quite famous uh, developer in China. But what then, in, during this process, what government do? They do a lot of planning of how, where, uh, no, how, where to build it. They place the, 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 the project to a certain period, uh, to a certain uh, site, and then let the builder to build it. So we can see this as a uh, 2011, uh, in 2011, there are some planning about affordable housing, and it's also similar that uh, most of the the, the project are out of the city, it's just on the outskirts because the you know, government would like to keep the center period for better price. So there are still some problem there. So, uh, little benefit for developer, there little benefit and. For the for the people, they, they can't stand this kind of long distance traveling every day. So there are many, you know, many empty affordable housing standing out of the skirt, out, out of the city. There, no one live there. 
No one even applied for that. That's funny. So, to copy with that, from the 1910, uh, government started to judge, uh, to, to adjust it from the to, 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 to uh, implement some uh, policy, public policy, which is tie the affordable housing in, uh, in uh, urban renewal project. So if you do urban renewal project, maybe very big project, you have to, to settle down uh, several percentage of the affordable housing. It depends on place, the, the percentage de depends on place. I don't know whether it does work, but it, it, we can see some little change one by one. We, we start to, to find a different way to, to show how to, 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 to build more affordable housing for people. So yeah, that's a trend. We can see at the start, we start with a, a layout control. Then the, current, the plan, urban planner start to keep it out uh, open to the market and just control the place. And nowadays they start to, to do something that's like a cross control instead of uh, to, to define the exact space for the, uh, the, the for the housing. So we can see the the, the, the train is quite opening to open to the market to let market help governments do that. That's a, why not I think the main strategy nowadays. And after the after this kind of uh, uh, to serve for this uh, group of people, so we moved to the another kind of people. What did the urban planner do to uh, to, to serve? Uh, this uh, peer, uh, this person without hukou. The answer is urban planner or government do nothing. And I think that's a very good answer for China because it gives them enough place for markets to run by themselves. And it's quite successful, I think, in nowadays, uh, in nowadays Shenzhen. So let's see. <sighs> Because the Shenzhen starts from the industrialization. So at the beginning, uh, the immigrant workers are always were always living in factory dormitory until now. Of uh, uh, you know Foxconn, that's a very big city to produce the uh, iPhone for Apple. Yes, they provide I don't know how many building floors for two I think. 220,000 uh, workers living together. That's quite crazy. <laughs> That's a very big you know, you know, com uh, factory with very big dormitory for the workers. But they are uh, only for the single workers, I think, at, at least. Because, uh, you know, immigrant workers are also very young. So, after they leave for a period, they start to, 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 to build up their family. Then they have to move from the dormitory to find their own space. So where to leave? That's a... Okay, so, so let's see where Shenzhen would provide. And at first, I, I, I just mentioned that before uh, 1979, Shenzhen was just a little fishing village. There are several villages spread out of the uh, in the in the territory with the farming land, far, farming land, or uh, along with the, the seaside. So there are many, not many, I think 200 or something like that uh, village uh, there. But after opening up, things changed. The big construction, big, big amount of construction there. Uh, the government built the, the new structure of the city, but they still, the, the villagers are still there, and to com compensate them because they obviously government engaged, uh, occupied their farming land. So for the com compensation. The government still leaves something for them, leaves the land for them to, to continue to live. So now the villagers lost their farming lands, but they have still have lands which are quite useful for the immigrant family. So that's why the, the march itself and everything happened after that. 
So they see the, the, the uh, formation of the village. At first, it's a, it's a little village, maybe it looks like this. And after that, all of the lands are owned by government, maybe just uh, uh, based on some policy or law. But uh, many villagers, are, uh, the village are still here. Then after that, many factories and uh, commercial buildings were built with some dormitory. Yes. And then the villagers start to, to contribute, uh, to, to, to build some uh, dormitories for the, for the surrounding, some uh, immigrant people to find a place to live. And then, because you know, uh, the village has grown up, government had to limit limit the speed, so they, they reserve the lands for the for the village, but still leave the enough lands for them to build not build, build more house. And then several new buildings were built. It's quite regular. It's quite you know different with the something happening in India or Chile because everything is looked similar. They, they use a, the same builders, I think. They you do build do build house in the same way as quite Chinese. And everything looks similar because a, it's a it's a union for just a unit. It's just for one villager. So if you have two two hundred villager, then you have two hundred buildings here. Everyone has one. So now there's old old village and new village, which is a in Tanglong, and now, yes, old village and new village. Then they start to fill up. Sometimes because uh, the, they, they build, uh, the, the building is not, not big enough, so they demolish them to build them again. So it's very high buildings, uh, six, to, six to eight floors. Uh, that's because uh, most of them are eight floor, because there's a law that if you go up, up of the uh, eight floor, you have to 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 build elevators, which, which is expensive for villagers. So they step build after the uh, stopped at the eighth floor. That's a that's it. Uh, the, that that's an urban village. And something is quite interesting that urban village is quite efficient. Why? Because. You know, when we come back uh, three, 30 years ago, when they go farming, they always go on foot. So the villagers is well distributed everywhere. They have their own lands, just on foot they can get it. So it's quite serve the, the it's quite, you know, the gener uh, homogeneous served all the region. It's very lovely for the, for the city now because it's quite, Everywhere, and you can uh, you can get your work just uh, you know, five minutes away from the urban village. That's quite lovely. So that's it. So after thirty years developing, and we can see there are still two two hundred and forty one villages uh, still there, and they just uh, use the forty more than forty square kilometers to contain six or seven million immigrants that was my, micro I think micro is it good Marico sorry mm -hmm. so and uh, but there's a uh, many disadvantages just as uh, poor infrastructures very depressing density sometimes it's some social problem there so maybe ten years ago, Government want to demolish them. It's it's quite harmful for them because there are many many social problems inside. But nowadays we look at the government, look at the uh, urban village as more positive attitude attribute, uh, attitude. I think. So then they they start to uh, assist villages to to improve the surroundings instead of uh, demolish them and. Maybe to, to build some uh, to to to, be, no, to produce some uh, very you know mini fire uh, fire car 
know how to say it, yes, to, to enter, to go inside, and because the, the distance was quite close, and the common fire car can enter, so they built a little, little one. And for the villagers, they are also have strong I, strong desire to, to, to improve themselves, such as uh, they, most of them, the villagers are local people because it's very rare now in China, now you know, in, in Shenzhen, so because they have strong identity to, 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 to prove their existence, so they build, rebuilt many temples for them and the big, big doors to, to identify where they are. That's a quite amazing thing. That and also, what government want to do now is to to adapt the this kind of informal affordable housing to formal affordable housing system. I don't know whether it does work. It's very hard to manage these uh, urban villagers because they are very strong. But I think the, the attitude we can see the attitudes are changing. People start to adapt it. People start to love it instead of hate it and uh, go far away from it. So that's uh, another thing we learned from the urban village is that because we have to serve a lot of group, big group of the immigrants. So what Shenzhen do is totally by market. What plans contribution is they can't do anything for that because the land is owned by villagers instead of government, so they can't do nothing, which is very good for the Shenzhen's future. For the Shenzhen nowadays and for the Shenzhen's future. That's very, yeah, I think uh, it's very important for China, for, for Shenzhen. So, we can see the trend that to serve a large, low-income population, the key word is get full use of market to provide affordable housing instead of the do with them do everything by government because the government is not powerful and that powerful or at that rich enough and also they are not necessary to do that it's not necessary to do that so i think i do a lot of quick <laughs> is, is it okay okay so let's move to conclusion uh, of course they are uh, at first i i i, I say how to support the high development and another is about how to serve the immigrant worker. It looks like a fragment of the, just a little fragment of the urban development, uh, the whole process of the urban development, we can, but we can see some interesting uh, relationship between them. At first we to support the, 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 the social economic development, we use top-down planning, very strong top-down planning to to, to realize the flexible urban form, which strongly support the urban, the, the economic development, and the flexible urban urban form also activates all of the lands, including the villagers' lands. So they use the bottom-up market to provide enough affordable housing for immigrant worker, which also strongly support the social economic development. That's what very nice circle in China, in, in Shenzhen. I think that's one of the reasons why Shenzhen goes up quickly. So, so what my conclusion is that to plan a city in fast growing China is to design a flexible plan, special structure and let it go. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>